Okay, in this little lecture, we're going to talk briefly about the cytoskeleton and also how cells are often interconnected with each other. So what is the cytoskeleton? Well, hopefully you read your book, it only has a small section on it. But it's a series of proteins that maintain cell shape as well as anchors and or moves organelles in the cell. Well, put another way, think of it like a scaffolding or like a skeleton within the cell to give it its shape and allows organelles and objects to move throughout it. Now they're made up of three fibers, large microtubules, thin actin filaments, and medium-sized intermediate filaments. With the microtubules, we're going to come back to this concept again when we get to cell division, cell replication. So that'll be a really important concept later on. Once again, just introducing concepts right now. Just knowing that we have these proteins, and this once again should not be a shock that, okay, if we want something special done, especially structurally, it's going to be a protein. So we have several different types of proteins that come together to f form this scaffolding, this framework, and allow movement within the cell. Specifically when in regards to movement, we have cilia and flagella. So both of these are made of those larger, those microtubules. They're both used in movement. Like cilia tend to be shorter and uh, like up here, it's kind of showing you, giving you an idea. Here's microtubules. And they actually allow movement. So like your lungs have the cilia to allow to, to move things, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, through your lungs to help keep the lungs clean. And if they don't function right, all of a sudden, we have a new pathology in there. We have a new disease. So it actually allows movement over the, the outer surface, the plasma membrane of the cells, and hence of the tissue all the way through to keep the lungs clean. Uh, flagella, on the other hand, uh, an example of that would be on sperm. And we've got sperm down here, and the flagella allow movement, the swimming of the sperm. So right away, being that I'm telling you that flagellum and cilia are used for movement, that right away should tell you, oh, they are going to require energy. All right, it's going to take energy to move these microtubules that make up the cilia and flagella. So right away, you know that this is going to re require ATP. A little bit hand-in-hand, hand, your book goes with this, cell junctions. And as you can see, junctions between cells and human tissue that will allow them to function in a coordinated manner. And yes, there are three types your book talks about, adhesion junctions, tight junctions, and gap junctions. But before I get into each one of these independently, I want you to realize something else. I'm going to take a step back. And this is something you're going to learn more about in anatomy and physiology. Uh, in the human body, we tend to classify things, well, obviously, well, in all bodies, but uh, we go cells, and then we talk about cells coming together to form tissues. Well, in the human body, we can classify all the various tissues in the body, which make up the organs, which then make up the organ systems, and then, of course, the whole body. We actually have four different types of tissues, four classifications. All right. You have epithelial tissue. connective tissue, muscular tissue, and you have nervous tissue. And where we're going to see these type of junctions primarily is this epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue is good two things especially. It's really good at lining surfaces like the outer surface of your skin or any membranes or what have you, uh, lining your organs. And it's also good at secretions. So your glands to secrete your hormones and so forth will be primarily made up of this epithelial tissue. So this is where you're going to find in the human body these types of cell junctions because epithelial tissue is going to be a whole bunch of cells that are going to be lined up all right next to each other and they have to be joined somehow and they're joined by a combination of all of these adhesion junctions, tight junctions, and gap junctions. Now adhesion junctions, as you can see, mechanically attached to adjacent cells common in, scent, in skin cells. Oh, that's epithelial right there, the outer surfaces of the skin, epithelial. And then along with that, actually, you have tight junctions. And that creates like a zipper-like barrier. And you see that more common in the digestive system, even though you'll see them both in skin as well. And then lastly, we have what's called gap junctions. 
where we get communication portals between cells. So in other words, it's like two, two plasma membranes between two cells are once again adjacent and they might be bonded already by these adhesion junctions or tight junctions, but you're gonna have these little portals going through both sides and excuse my poor artwork called connexins where, where small ions and proteins can then actually transfer so and go across so this is actually gap junctions allow communication we're gonna find out that intracellular communication is very very important and this form in particular is called direct communication from cell to cell it's one cell talking to an adjacent cell you might say okay well what are the other forms of communication well if you thought about it the most obvious ones would be neural nervous system communication or hormonal where chemical messengers are spread throughout the circulatory system and the last form is paracrine communication where it's also secreted but it doesn't go to the circulatory system right now why what you appreciate is these gap junctions allow that magic word right here communication and once again we're introducing concepts now that are come back again later so here's a picture of each one of those so over here we have that adhesion junction almost think of it like a spot weld connecting two adjacent cells together all right so you got like the spot weld and once again they're connected by these intercellular uh, filaments but then you've got these tight junctions which are once again kind of more like a zipper like so it's more of a seal it's a stronger seal between the two this is really strong but this keeps them even tighter and closer together and then over here we have these gap junctions these membrane channels that things can enter and go across this way there's a bad arrow goes through the middle and this way once again technically these membrane channels are called connexins and there's actually uh, some people out there in the health and fitness industry who focus a lot on these connexins because if you don't get good intracellular communication that can once again lead to disease and there are some diets out there that actually focus on uh, making sure that we produce the proper connexins so we get the proper communication between ourselves so <clears throat> More or less, this was a rather short one. Um, the next couple of lectures are going to be quite a bit longer because, once again, we're going to emphasize them a little bit more because of their importance to the health and fitness professional.